everyone, today we're going to be talking about the relationship between vitamin D and coronavirus. And quick shout out to one of my classmates who did a study on COVID-19 over the summer and he actually talked about briefly about the relationship between vitamin D and COVID-19 which kind of inspired this video and it made me want to research that further about the relationship between having low vitamin D and how that affects your severity with coronavirus. So thank you so much to my classmate. You know who you are. So recently there has been a lot of studies that actually covered how vitamin D can affect how your cells target coronavirus and prevent severity of disease if you get coronavirus. But there has been other studies that looked at different geographical regions when it comes to sunlight exposure and they saw that regions of the world that had low amounts of sunlight, they were more likely to have respiratory diseases and it could potentially lead to a more severe illness with coronavirus. But there are limitations to those studies because they are retroactive, which means they're not looking at vitamin D deficiency right now. They looked at it retroactively from the past and are attributing it to current conditions. So there are limitations to um, correlations and definitions that we're making currently. However, that does not mean that we know exactly whether or not it's effective because coronavirus is a novel virus and and we will probably not know whether or not there are significant things that can affect coronavirus for a number of years after multiple studies are have been done. I also want to emphasize that these studies specifically looked at vitamin D deficiency, not the fact that you, if you have vitamin D and you continue to take more vitamin D, it'll make it'll prevent you from getting severe disease. These studies looked at people who have low vitamin D levels already, lower than the standard amount you should have, and how they have progressed to severe COVID. So what does vitamin D exactly do to our bodies that make us more resistant to coronavirus and respiratory disease symptoms? One of the primary methods that our body fights against the coronavirus is through our T regulatory cells, which is a type of lymphocyte, which is a type of white blood cells if you took high school biology. And these T regulatory cells have been shown to be lower in number when it comes to people who have severe symptoms from COVID-19. And there has been previous studies that have shown that vitamin D and having adequate amounts of it can increase your levels of T regulatory cells. Another way coronavirus is very fatal is that with patients that have experienced acute respiratory distress syndrome from coronavirus usually die from something called cytokine storm, which is a very, very heightened inflammatory response against the virus, but also it ends up damaging your own tissues leading to death. And cytokine storm has been seen in numerous other viral infections and other other forms of acute respiratory distress syndrome. And it's a really, really mega way for our body to fight an infection which ends up killing us, unfortunately. However, cytokine storm has been linked to low vitamin D levels. Patients with lower amounts of vitamin D ended up having higher amounts, higher incidences of cytokine storm when it came to fighting viruses and fighting other forms of infections. If you've also been watching the news, you will notice that there's a lot of articles talking about how COVID-19 not only affects your lungs, but it increases your amount, your risks for getting a really, really fatal blood clots throughout your entire body. And it's been shown that low amounts of vitamin D does increase your risk for having something called a thrombolic event, which means your body becomes more susceptible to having a clot or a stroke and which w which may result in death. However, there are limitations, as I've said before, to these studies that it has been a study done before where they got mixed results when it came to supplementing vitamin D for people who have respiratory illnesses and they found that some people benefited and some people didn't. However, another study looked at vit people with vitamin D deficiency and they supplemented them with vitamin D and they saw that they had a lower amount of respiratory illnesses. However, I will note that that was only due, it was most significant to those patients who already had a vitamin D deficiency. So if you are not lacking in vitamin D, if you're not lacking in sunlight, you don't really need to worry 
currently from the literature that we do have, but very, very but pay very, very close attention to the studies that will be released in the future about the connection between vitamin D and COVID risk. I will also say that taking vitamin D does not prevent you from getting coronavirus. Unfortunately, the most effective way to do that is to wear masks, to stay home, and to practice social distancing. So please do not go to your local grocery store, buy the highest amount of vitamin D that you can, and start ingesting them like crazy. Because if you do that, you'll be kind of like those people that are drinking hand sanitizer because vitamin D can you can overdose on vitamin D and I'm telling you it's not something that you do want. Also, as I've said before, all these studies show that people with vitamin D deficiency are benefiting from it. Lastly, you might be thinking, well, I don't know if I have a vitamin D deficiency and I can't get access to a doctor. I can't get those tests because I don't have health insurance or I lack access to health care, which unfortunately many, many Americans face to this day. What you can do is instead of taking vitamin D supplements, just go out in the sun and spend um, 10 to 15 minutes out in the sun. For people of color, you might want to stay for 20 minutes out in the sun to get your natural vitamin D levels. However, again, I will say don't stay out in the sun too long which because it'll increase your risks for other things like basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. And if you do have health insurance and you are wondering whether or not you have a vitamin D deficiency, please feel free to contact your primary care physician and ask if you can get that test done because vitamin D is not only protective against coronavirus but it's also protective against a lot of other things such as osteoporosis. So vitamin D is incredibly important in all different aspects of life so if you do have access to care definitely is something that you might want to look at if you have a deficiency whether or not coronavirus is of concern to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was informational for you and you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this video, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to keep up with my daily life. I have a lot of interesting things going on and I practice photography, so it might be up your alley if you're the creative type. And I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.